This year I'm teaching STEM classes and one of the issues that I've been seeing a lot so far with my sixth grade students is they're struggling to read the measurement on a dial caliper, knowing um, how to take the measurement, where to find the numbers that they need, and sort of what those numbers mean. So this video is a quick walkthrough on how to measure something, the different parts of a dial caliper, how they're used, um, sort of the names of the different pieces, and then how to take a reading from the information that you see here. So I hope you like it and I hope it's useful and um, enjoy it. All right, leave comments below if you have any questions, let me know. The different parts of our dial caliper, we have the bezel, which is this metal rim around the dial, and that's what we would use to sort of zero in our dial caliper when we start. Um, so that'll give us information about uh, the object that we're measuring. We have up top here what's called a lock screw. This will lock the jaw in place and prevent it from sliding back and forth. I call this the thumb wheel, but you could call it the clamp, uh, the clamp screw or the clamp wheel. And then we have down here this other twistable piece is the bezel nut. That'll prevent your bezel from shifting. So if you put it where you want it and then tighten up your, your bezel nut, it'll make it so that won't move. We have our upper jaws, which measure the interior measurement of something, and I'll show you that. And we have our lower jaws, which would measure the exterior measurement of something. The first thing to, to do when you're using a dial caliper is to make sure that you are zeroed out. Um, you can see this caliper is currently closed, as tight as it'll go, and it's not pointing directly at the zero. So I should twist the bezel to the point where my needle points directly at my zero. Once I get that in place, I would want to tighten down my sort of bezel locking screw here. And now I can't really twist my bezel by accident and it stays zeroed out. To take a measurement of an object with my dial caliper, I would um, first make sure that my lock screw is not down tight. So if it is in a tight position, just back it off about half a turn. I don't want it to fall out, but I want it to be loose enough for it. Just a little bit of pressure on the thumb wheel here will cause the jaws to open or close. So I get it to the point where I can fit my object inside of it. I'm gonna measure this pencil. I put the pencil in and I just use pressure on the thumb wheel until it gets to the point where the wheel will start spinning and the jaws don't get any closer. So once that's in there, I'd probably lock it down using that lock screw at the top. And now I'm ready to take my reading. So if I look at the, the numbers that are indicated here, this number in that zero is at a higher level than the one, the two, the three, and the four. So this tells me that I'm sort of between zero and one full inch, the ones behind the dial at this time. So it, I would call this zero point three and then some extra stuff because I'm not quite at the four yet. So it's zero point three. I, then I start to look at the numbers on my dial and it looks like an eight four. So this would be written as zero point three eight four. I'm gonna use my dial caliper to measure the interior of this opening here, this circle. So it's gonna tell me the diameter across that circle. First, I wanna make sure that I am zeroed in and it looks pretty good. I'm off by just a touch. So I'm gonna back that up, rotate my bezel. So I'm right there on zero. I'm gonna use the upper jaws, make sure this is loose enough to open up. Upper jaws, you can see that I have a flat surface here and a flat surface there. So I'm gonna put those inside of that opening on the tape and open them up. At this point, you wanna be really careful. Those upper jaws are really sharp and pointy and um, you can easily hurt yourself with those if you are not being careful. So it looks like right there. And I'm gonna lock that down. So if I look here at the measurement, I can take a reading and it looks like I'm not quite at the zero on my dial. So that's gonna give me information over here on my reference edge. So this looks like I'm at zero point you kind of start to see the black ink of the nine, but according to this, I'm not right there yet. So I'm gonna call it 0 0.897, because I'm at the 97 on the dial. The zero is the number before the decimal point. It kind of looks like I'm at the nine, but I'm actually not at the nine yet. I'm just three one thousandths of an inch before the nine, which is why I can start to see the black ink of the nine. I had a student give me this fancy little um, Halloween Rubik's Cube the other day. So I can take a measurement of that using my dial caliper here. So I'm gonna put the jaws over the shape I'm trying to measure. I'm gonna use the thumb screw or the thumb wheel here to 
to get it to the point where the wheel kind of freely rotates. You can see that spinning, but the dial's not moving. It's not getting any closer. At that point, I am going to lock it into place and I'm ready to take my measurement. So this one I chose because it's a little bit over an inch. So when I look at the numbers, it's not zero point something, but this one that's elevated higher than the neighboring one and the nine before it tells me that I'm over one inch. So at this point I'm at 1.1, and then I go to the numbers in my dial. So it's 61, two, three. So I'm gonna call it um, 1.163 will be the number for this particular measurement. So again, I'm using here the reference edge is this very sort of sharp, thin edge right here. Tell me I'm between the one and the two after the big one, so 1.163.